Ask Reddit by Lord Pond. You gain control of JK Rowling's Twitter account for a day. What unnecessary piece of information do you add to Harry Potter lore? Potter Puppet Pals is now canon. ITS a PIPEBOMB. Edit, my first silver. You have my gratitude, kind stranger. Buckbeak is an animagus who is fully intelligent and capable of turning back into a human at any time, but doesn't because it's his fetish. I love this because he was so committed he let himself be executed in the original timeline. Harry's favorite finger, for no particular reason, is his left index finger. Also, inexplicably, that's Ginny's as well. All Hogwarts students are required to take a sex ed course the teacher Hagrid. Okay now some needs to do a fanfic where Hagrid teaches sex ed I don't mean an NC-17 thing either I mean a legitimate humorous story. Harry wakes up in Hogwarts and everyone is gone for Christmas vacation when he has to defend the school from being robbed by Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern. Edit, Silver? Damn. Thanks Yael, D. Make the fan theory that the surviving Weasley twin becomes the Gene Wilder Willy Wonka later in life. And that led to the whole Willy Wonka is a prequel to Snow Pisser theory. The composition of the wand means nothing. A wizard could use a plastic drinking straw and it would work just fine, as long as they expect it to work. What happens when plastic straws are banned? Snape was a stamp collector. This is the real reason James Potter bullied him. It was really him and not the Wheelies who wrote and mailed the letter inviting him to the Quidditch World Cup. Although stamps on the envelope were his way getting back at James. Ron grew up to become Ed Sheeran. The sorting hat was percent 100 unnecessary for class distribution. Its primary purpose was to get rid of head lice. I've got a secret affliction, Harry. Completely unnecessary? And X200B. For a brief time in 1956 teenaged wizards used to be which vacuum cleaners to use in lieu of broomsticks. That is 1000 times better than most of the shit we've gotten. Ron likes to take all his clothes off when he poops. Oddly enough I have a friend who's been compared to Ron many times who also does this. When you're using the invisible cloak you're not actually invisible you're naked they just choose to ignore you as to not make things awkward. That explains why Fudge and Malfoy send Hagrid straight to Azkaban without a trial in book 2 when they walk into Hagrid's hut while Harry and Ron are hiding. Dudley Dursley has a muggle-born daughter, she gets her Hogwarts letter and Dudley reconnects with Harry so he can learn about magic and be the opposite of his parents. Teenage wizards would jack off in front of the hottest moving paintings. Deleted. Hogwarts in the 60s was a drug-fueled Technicolor dancing orgy every night and the only reason it doesn't come up more often is because not a lot of people clearly remember it. That must be when Dumbledore made the switch from sharp-looking suits to colorful flowy robes. Harry was born with a third testicle. Fred came back as a ghost. Harry and Ron use some of Hermione's hair plus Polyjuice potion to kill some time in the dormitories. That was great, Ron. I promise I'll be Hermione next time. You always say that. Double quote. Harry put his name in the Goblet of Fire. And the portion of Voldemort's soul in him allowed him to do so because it was old enough. The reason Dumbledore didn't bring back Harry's parents with the Time Turner is because Dumbledore always wanted a son of his own, but then changed his mind a few years later and dumped him at the Dursleys. There's a solid book that could be written about Dumbledore's attempts to defeat Voldemort through time travel. In the end, he had to choose to sacrifice his own life to make sure it happened. Hagrid tried foe and didn't really care for it. This is so delightfully pointless. I love it. That most people don't play beyond their early 20s because they develop Quidditch arsehole. 
Every so often a player has to retire because a snitch goes somewhere where you don't usually want a vibrating golden orb, and frankly there's no returning from that ignominy. Nobody gives a fuck about Harry after he graduates, and he ends up spending the rest of his life bitter and working as a barista at Wizard Starbucks in Hogsmeade. There's a witch writer called KJ Loring famous for her muggle book series Harold Rogers where the protagonist engages in wacky muggle adventures. Edit. 48 inbox notices and not one Hogwarts letter. With sidekicks Roberta Beasley and Herman Danger. Fred and George Weasley switched places during the Battle of Hogwarts. When George died. Fred adopted George's life complete with cutting off his ear because he figured George wouldn't want him to spoil the joke. Makes sense as to why George ended up marrying Angelina Johnson when it was Fred who dated her at Hogwarts. Deleted. Alternatively Harry is flat broke at the end of book 7 and lives a life of complete poverty. You see the wizarding bank was no longer willing to do business with the man who strolled in the front door and robbed the fuck out of them. Since goblins can't use wands they also seized all funds from Harry's vault to pay wizards to repair the damages. Buckbeak was a metaphor. That the cauldron Voldemort was rebirthed and during Goblet of Fire used to belong to Horace Sloan. It was gifted to his favorite student, Tom Riddle, the year Riddle left Hogwarts. That's a perfectly reasonable piece of info, though. After book 2 and the Polyjuice experiments Ron and Hermione permanently switched places. Blimey Hermione. I'd double down and declare that some of the older teachers at Hogwarts would forget they were supposed to use toilets now, so occasionally they just drop trow and urinate in front of everyone. N -O 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 -O. Underneath the robe, Professor McGonagall is actually two twin dwarfs standing on each other's shoulders. They take turns being on top so the other doesn't get tired. I would like one alcohol please. Voldemort doesn't have a butthole after resurrection. He's like a smooth Ken doll down there. Harry pronounces it jif, not jif. G as in jif. Twilight is absolutely in the same universe. How does that explain Cedric Diggory? The Loch Ness Monster is someone who tried Polyjuice Potion with Basilisk DNA. Actually, the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them textbook from the Hogwarts Library set, not the screenplay, specifies that the Loch Ness Monster was a Kelpie, I think. It may have been one of the other creatures. I would 100% post that meme JK Rowling reveals that you, the reader, were gay all along. But besides that, I would talk about the required procedure behind the pre-plumbing shitting wherever you want then making it disappear thing. Also, WTF JKR? Why couldn't they have had magical outhouses? Why did it have to get weird? The My Immortal fanfic is now 100% canon, thank you, JKR. The preps will not be happy about this. Hermione dresses up as a cat girl for on who developed a thing for it before they were dating. And Hermione gets inspiration for her numerous dedicated costumes and such from Hente, which is why she works tirelessly to keep Ron intimidated by computers and the internet. In order to have the feast so lovingly described, House Elves of Hogwarts had perfected the art of reusing leftovers multiple times. They secretly go to cheap restaurants and learn from muggles. Recently they discovered internet, and now Dean Thomas's mother prints out for them every tip and trick she can find at frugal living blogs. I don't think I could top the post she made about wizards disappearing their poo with magic before muggles invented toilets. Didn't the snake hide in some ancient plumbing? Muggle orphanages know about magic and when an orphan shows magical prowess they phone the Ministry of Magic for pickup and leave the baby outside. The ministry hasn't figured out how voicemail works and never come to pick up the children. Well this explains why the White Walkers keep sparing the orphanages. Deleted. 
Explains why she's incredibly horny for the guys. George Weasley was adopted. Not Fred though. One of my favorite quotes from any piece of Harry Potter media comes from an interview of the actors who played Fred and George. And X200B. So are you two actually twins in real life? No it's funny. We actually met at the audition. And X200B. That line kills me every time. Harry doesn't have a left pinky toe. It was the only part of him hurt by the killing curse when he was a baby. And then all of us fan theorists will wonder why Lily didn't love his left pinky toe. Now that you mention it, why didn't Lily love the lightning bolt shaped patch of skin on Harry's forehead? I'd clarify that Dumbledore wasn't really gay, just gay for pay. Figure that way, nobody is happy. I'm writing a new book. I'll make her add a lot more lore by bumping community expectations. Well technically she is, just not HP. She's currently writing a crime novel, which should have released last year. Hermione was actually a collective delusion shared by Harry and Ron. And Crumb went with it because he's hugely unstable. I actually always envisioned Dumbledore aggressively asking Harry, maybe even yelling, if he put his name in the Goblet of Fire. Herodotia Pityerna mean the Goblet of Fire Dumbledore asked calmly. Neville Longbottom has a 30.5 centimeter cock. It balances out the weight from his long bottom obviously.